Hi guys again and time for the best uh, game of the past week. Uh, you're just looking at one of the most spectacular positions in the Dragon opening, believe it or not. It's considered to be lost for black. I played 13 games so far and I made 13 wins. So fasten your seat belts and get ready for the real fight. So I was black and you know that uh, I really enjoy playing the Dragon line. So after e4, c5. My opponent played knight f3. Uh, what I have to tell you about this game, he's rated 2750 online and he's an IM, which means that the guy is really strong and uh, he knows the theory. And the problem of these guys is that they all know the, what is considered to be the refutation of the line, but nobody knows till the very end. So anyways, after knight e4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, you know how much I like to play the dragon and this is like, I don't know, like billionth video on my channel about the dragon opening. After bishop e3, bishop g7, f3, castles, queen d2, knight c6, long castle. If you check all these official bases of the uh, chess.com and lead chess, you would just realize that the long castle is the most common thing here by white by far the most popular in the last 10 years and it's considered to be the most difficult for dragon players anyways uh, the better the best move against long castle is of course d5 you have my video on the channel uh, it was like a special promo video where i gave you the bishop d7 and how i won so many games with it but lately i'm just rushing absolutely everyone with a little bit forgotten line and line that is considered to be simply bad for black so it's knight takes d4 well when you play knight takes d4 uh, you just want to get a, an earned tempo for developing your bishop on e6 and that's what i'm doing here i'm willing to go with a queen a5 and afterwards to play rook fc8 there is a very nice trick here by white players they just go with the king b1 if they don't go for king b1 but h4 g4 or anything else you just play queen a5 uh, with the queen on a5 and bishop on e6 you threaten this pawn and when they play king b1 you just manage to get in time here what does it mean in time it means that i can consider rook takes c3 it means that i can consider rook a b8 b5 b4 but at the same time it means that they can never play knight d5 uh, threatening my queen and threatening this pawn because i moved the rook from c8 so when i take they do not have 97 because I approach with the king and I'm going to win this knight. And why am I showing you this, you're wondering? Because uh, all these good players, top players, uh, everybody goes with the king b1. I'm going to tell you an interesting story. Uh, I played against four GMs. Uh, two of these guys were 2650 FIDE, uh, even 2650 plus. On an old uh, site, it's called uh, ICC and uh, i play there and i won all these games using the same kind of a trick so for all these years i've been using this trick and nobody knows the refutation that's the funniest thing anyways after king b1 it's aimed against queen a5 that's why i showed you uh, previous lines so when they play knight d5 now they threaten to win the queen you would have to put it back on d8 to defend on e7 if you take now they play knight e7 check and because of rook on f8 you absolutely don't have way to approach this knight and to get it back that's the point so i played queen c7 and the idea of queen c7 is to play rook fc8 and being tempo down to go with queen a5 afterwards my opponent went for the most direct approach uh, that begins with h4 i played rook fc8 played h5 and i played queen a5 right now i want to second c3 so when they take on g6, we don't have time to second c3 because they will include uh, one, one more move intermediary uh, to take on uh, h7. So first h takes g6. And now we want to go uh, rook takes c3. So many games I won when they played g4. I sack, they go here, I give check, they go here. And now it's very important not to play rook c8 because queen a3. And you can't avoid exchanging the queens this queen on a3 is a boss because here you just have to play queen a1 king d2 and queen a4 you now threaten knight e4 bishop is under uh, threat you want to play like this 
They can't even play like king e1 because of rook c8. They can't even play this because of bishop g4 and so many things. I'm just giving you some material to take a look at home. So they simply have to go with a3 to overprotect uh, at the same time to avoid rook c3 ideas. But it now gives you to go with rook ab8 and to go b5 and b4. When they play bishop d3, uh, they're actually, they, they keep on developing us. Uh, actually themselves and wait for us to go with b5 once we do b5 because we're about to crush them with b4 they play this move that is considered to be a refutation and for all these years this move queen g5 was considered to be the top move against this line it's aimed against b4 and it doesn't allow black to uh, go for the main idea and that's a break on the queen side coped with b4 i remember uh, checking with uh, engines uh, and uh, even like 15 years ago, I had this analysis for white and I played and I won two games. And then I saw that Van Hal beat someone in European Club Cup that I was commentating back to 2016. The game went like D5, covering, uh, threatening before and covering uh, the, the fifth rank. After an A D5, uh, Bishop D5, he takes D5 and B4. They do not have time for this because bishop g6 and when they take, they're just one move away from the win. White plays extraordinary rook h7 and you can't avoid uh, rook g7, bishop f7 and so many other uh, type of things. <coughs> and you just run into mate. So I played rook c5. I didn't want to play that d5 idea because it's certainly bad. And everyone, of course, takes, I mean, how the hell you can give up a rook for the bishop. And then everybody expects, even engine says, take by pawn. And after queen c5, play some knight e7, and then play a game uh, where you have the bishop here in the dark square. Bishop, they do not have attack, and you can play for some uh, compensation. Although, I like to go with b4. So I'm clearly down a rook here, uh, but watch this out. You cannot take by bishop because we're gonna take the queen. Of course, uh, they capture, and now even the rook is open, and they all now uh, decide to calm the things down and play bishop e3. And that's uh, the most important thing here, and that's what we need to discuss here, and that's uh, where your creativity in the dragon and uh, good attacking and uh, you know like tactical skills can show off. Black moves and wins. Da -da -da -da. Knight d5. An amazing bishop on the diagonal. An amazing witness on b2 and king on b1. Threatening the knight on c3. All these pieces are open. Queen on g5 is hanging. Uh, they can't take it because of rook b2. So this is an uh, extraordinary thing. This guy, uh, you know, like uh, uh, thought for at this moment for like a minute and a half, played king c1. But let me just show you briefly. If they go knight e5, you play rook b2. They go here, you play rook b1, and when they take, you deliver checkmate. Everything is forced. If they play, it takes d5. You play rook b2, and if they play like this, you play bishop c3, and the mate is inevitable. And that's why my opponent, after checking all these possibilities and realizing that he was going to get mated, he played king c1. I instantly, without any thinking, took on b2, uh, because I realized that if he goes king b2, bishop c3 is just checkmate, Turns out that the king d2 was only move, in which case we just take and bring the bishop back, threatening knight c3 and, uh, you know, like with further, uh, taking the further material and uh, being winning. And my opponent just decided to play the knight d5. Here, I did some sort of enticing. I just forced this king to take on b1. And when the king took on b1, I made it this guy. So it's pretty funny position. I'm two rooks and the... Uh, uh, knight down uh, and I'm still mating my opponent without any problems. Well, that's the power of the dragon. Hope that you enjoyed in the video of the past week and there are going to be much more beautiful ones in the future. All the best and see you soon.